Hello friends and thank you for joining me here at Nontoxicom. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration as to how viruses are isolated today. Now, if you choose to, you may consider this satire. All right, this is the culmination of a great deal of research that I have read as well as contacts with some actual scientists. So let's pretend this is our Petri dish, all right? So, let's say Jane the scientist, Jane the virologist, wants to identify a new virus. And now I need to clarify, this is not about any specific virus, all right? She wants to identify a new virus. She thinks that she may have discovered one, all right? Well, how does that happen? First, you need a Petri dish. This is going to be our Petri dish, all right? Now, Petri dishes generally are sterile. That means that there isn't bacteria or fungal spores, etc., in the Petri dish. Sometimes there is cellular food in the Petri dish, sometimes there isn't. Now, if there is cellular food, it's generally synthetically derived. So that's something to consider. So in this Petri dish, we're going to have some human cells. Okay, now, we also are going to have some pig cells. Let's add some monkey cells as well. It's rarely just human cells, all right? Now, let's say a nasal swab sample is taken from a human subject who is sick. This represents the nasal swab. In that nasal swab, there will be, just one moment, fungal cells, or fungi, excuse me, gonna be some mold spores, because of, you know, where the sample is taken from. There also will be some bacteria as well, okay? Now also, of course, we have the virus itself, assuming there's a virus there. Once that's in there, Jane, the scientist, she's going to add some toxic chemicals. These chemicals are known to be toxic. They're known to cause cell death. She's then going to add some pharmaceuticals. These pharmaceuticals, again, are known to be toxic. They, they are known to cause cell death. But this is how it's done, friends. This is what the peer-reviewed literature tells us. There may be a few other things that are added as well. Now she sets the Petri dish aside and she comes back to it later. How much later? It varies. But one thing is for certain, the human cells and likely the other animal cells will be dead when she comes to look at her Petri dish. She will then declare, look, the virus killed these cells, these human and animal cells. After this happens, if someone walks into her lab and asks her, hey, have you isolated the virus? She will gesture to this and declare, yes. See my isolated virus? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it wonderful? I just love it so much. And this little study will be touted as proof that the newly isolated virus does indeed cause cellular harm. Now, do the cells starve to death? Because if you wait long enough, even if you provide some cellular food, eventually they'll die. Eventually they'll run out of food. Could it have been the synthetic food that killed them? We don't know. Could it have been the bacteria? What about the fungal spores? Could it have been the toxic pharmaceuticals what about the toxic chemicals? You be the judge. What do you think? 
Does this look like an isolated virus to you? Does this look like an isolated anything to you? Please share this video. If you are wondering why more people aren't speaking up about this topic, I'll link to a video in which I describe why. Thank you for being here. Have a most beautiful and blessed day. Please consider signing up for our weekly newsletter.